Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Dean Juan Vera, and today we'll talk about contempt. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Dean Rod Vera, and today in this video, we'll talk about contempt. What is contempt? As you may have seen in the videos and on TV and the news about the hearings both in the Senate and the House of Representatives regarding many issues uh, such as the Alice Goo and uh, the Pogo situation. And I'm sure you have noticed also that there's a lot of uh, these representatives, these legislators, citing the witnesses or the resource persons as in contempt. Let us analyze what exactly is contempt. The power of contempt basically starts with the judiciary. And contempt or disobedience is declaring somebody in disobedience of the court, whether direct or indirect. Direct contempt under the judicial system or the rules of procedure is that when a witness or a party inside the courtroom is disobeying or disrupting or not respecting both the judge or any orders of the court. Now, it's, it is direct contempt if it is done in the presence of the judge or in his chambers or near the judge. And it's indirect contempt when it's just not following an order, whether it be a subpoena or any other order or, or judgment issued by the court. Now, is the power of contempt with or is present in the Senate or in the House of Representatives? Again, in the rules of court, in both criminal and uh, civil procedures, a contempt order is not vindicative. It is not punished. It is just citing discipline to the people or those who are in the courtroom or the party litigant to follow or and or give respect to the judge. Citing somebody in contempt is usually done rarely, and it must be a clear disobedience to the orders of the court. And most usually, it's only resorted when it's necessary to carry out the justice or at least to carry out the orders of the court. Now, is contempt available to both the Senate and the House of Representatives in their inquiry in aid of legislation? There's a leading Supreme Court case about this, and I will give the reference to the case in the description below. Now, let's make it clear. The power of contempt is not given in the Constitution, in the article regarding or explaining the legislative department. But the Supreme Court has cited and declared that the power of contempt is necessarily inherent in Congress, both the Senate and the House, so that it is they can carry out their mandate to enact laws. A constitutional mandate is given that the Senate or the House of Representatives may be allowed to conduct inquiries in aid of legislation. Now, in this inquiries, the Senate and the House of Representatives have to interview resource persons, witnesses, to find out information that is vital, that's important, that is pertinent in the way, in the manner that they have to create the laws. Without the truthful and the factual information, the law that they may enact or they may legislate could be inefficient, missing, or otherwise unconstitutional. The Supreme Court in that case led to, le declared or manifested that the power of contempt is really inherent and it is for self-preservation. Both being an equal branch of the government, the Senate and the House of Representatives, need that power to compel the truthful and factual information from resource persons and witnesses. A caveat on that power of uh, inquiry and age of legislation is that the rights of the persons, both witnesses and resource persons, must be respected. I'll make another video on that and I'll put that in the description below when it is available. Now, in that case, which is cited down below, the Supreme Court has declared that the power of contempt with the legislatures is actually punitive, punitive in nature. But while these inquiries or these investigations are not criminal in nature, once the House of Representatives or the Senate cites somebody in contempt, due process must kick in. Now, when the contempt is paired with a custodial order, then it is akin to a criminal procedure. The Supreme Court has determined that when that, when that occurs, the witness or the resource person that is cited in contempt and given a custodial order must be allowed to explain his side. Now, one of the 
uh, disobedience to the House or the Senate is when you refuse to answer or when you refuse to uh, he heed or to follow a subpoena or an order to appear in the hearings. But lately, and we've seen that in the marathon hearings, is that the Senate, the senators and the representatives, when they disagree with an answer, they want to cite that witness in contempt. Now, the Supreme Court has determined that the ground to cite somebody in contempt is based on the rule of the Senate and the House when somebody falsely or evades an answer. Now, that has been open-ended and that has not been defined clearly by both the Senate, I mean, by both the legislature and the judiciary. But being a dean, I would like to make my argument and present a theory on what evasive means. Now, evasive is when they try to avoid or not answer the question directly. Falsely is when somebody is not telling the truth. Now, who can determine that? When somebody is giving false information, it is not outright yet determined. Making something false based on a hearing, that is subject to perjury. Now, it is up to the one declaring that somebody is lying or somebody is giving false testimony to make the connection that what is being uh, testified or what is being relayed in the hearing is not actually the truth. As you can see, most of the, our, red, our respected legislatures, when they disagree with the answer or they don't like the answer, they want to cite that witness or resource person in contempt. Now, that one has not yet been defined, and that whether the line is crossed, it has not yet been determined. Now, again, when one of the grounds in the Senate and both the House is when they refuse to swear or give an oath to the testimony, that, can be, that person or that witness can be declared in contempt. Now, to close this video and to keep it um, thinking, uh, last month there was a certain high official number two officer in the land, uh, she, refused, she refused to take the oath or affirmation prior to the hearing on her budget. Now, how come she wasn't cited in contempt? Hi, please do me a favor and smash that like button. It'll help me a lot and it will trigger the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you don't, my dog will eat this exam booklet and that student has to repeat his final exam again.